Hi, my name is Anna Yeager, and I'm going to be talking about the polio virus, which uh, causes poliomyelitis, and it's commonly known as polio. This is not an infection that the U.S. currently has to worry about, but it is prevalent in other countries today, and it was prevalent in our own country uh, not too long ago. So to begin with, I'm going to talk about a little brief history of polio. Uh, then I'll go into the polio virus, the symptoms, transmittance, diagnosis, the prevention, and treatment. So in 1916, there was a polio epidemic in the United States, and it took 6,000 lives, and it paralyzed more than, a thou uh, more than thousands. It was centered in Brooklyn, New York, and New York itself had 2,000 out of the 6,000 deaths. Uh, during the summer when it occurred, it led to state and nationwide closures of public pools, amusement parks, and any other places that children gathered. In 1921, President Franklin Roosevelt actually contracted polio himself, which left him paralyzed. A well-known invention to come out of the polio was the iron lung. Uh, this ap this uh, was created because the doctors saw that the patients were unable to breathe in the early stages of the infection due to the virus paralyzing the muscles in the chest and it just made them worse off or it caused more death. So they created this respirator because it mimics the pumping action of the lungs in order to send oxygen to the body uh, and the muscles in the brain. In 1953, the Salk vaccine was available, and nearly 2 million children participated in the trial for this vaccine. It was potentially safe, and it, is, it was an inactivated injectable vaccine. Uh, in 1962, however, Sabin replaced Salk, and Sabin is a live attenuated vaccine, and it was easier to administer, and it was cheaper, so it made it a more preferable choice. So polio virus is a simple non-envelope virus, and without the envelope, it needs another mechanism that allows the viral genome to enter the host. It is known as an enterovirus, which means that it is transmitted through the fecal oil route uh, via salivatory or respiratory droplets. It is a single-stranded, it has a single-stranded plus sense RNA genome with icosahedral capsid. Uh, composed of 60 copies each of four coded proteins, uh, and they're called VP1, VP2, VP3, and VP4. The virus is, um, is initiated by the binding of the PVR, uh, by binding to the PVR or the CD155. Um, PVR stands for poliovirus receptor. And once it is bound at a phys physiological temperature, it undergoes an irreversible change. So this is just a picture uh, showing nurses helping children that have polio and it's they're doing therapeutic exercises in order to work the muscles in order to gain some of the strength back. So polio, the polio vi virus is, has a tropism for epithelial cells of the alimentary tract and the central nervous system. Uh, it causes non-paralytic poliomyelitis and paralytic poliomyelitis. Uh, paralytic can non-paralytic can become paralytic. Uh, paralytic is not always preceded by a minor illness, and when you do have paralysis from polio, it is irreversible. Uh, spinal poliomyelitis and bulbar poliomyelitis are subcategories of paralytic poliomyelitis. Spinal uh, po poliomyelitis uh, is the process of the spinal cord, whereas bulbar is the process of the brain stem. Some symptoms uh, associated with the non-paralytic and paralytic are similar and some are different. Uh, the non-paralytic is less severe by far and when you have non-paralytic symptoms doesn't necessarily mean you'll have the paralytic symptoms. However, if you have the paralytic symptoms, sometimes you don't even uh, experience the non-paralytic and you just experience the paralytic. So for non-paralytic symptoms, they usually last for two to five days, and that includes the sore throat, a fever, tiredness, nausea, headache, and stomach pain. It's often classified or mistaken as flu symptoms because they're so similar. The paralytic symptoms, however, uh, include parenthesia, uh, parenthesia, which is the pins and needles feeling that you might get if you sit down too long and you stand up and your feet feel a little numb. Uh, you have, 
meningitis occurs in one out of 25 people that have polio, uh, deformed limbs, uh, especially in the hips, the ankles, and the feet, and there's severe muscle spasms and pains. Uh, there's paralysis or weakness in the arms, legs, or sometimes even both, and the paralysis, paralysis occurs in one out of 200 people. Uh, as, of, as for transmittance, it only infects humans, and it's from person-to-person -person contact or person-to-fomite contact. Uh, it lives, but you need the, uh, a person to, con uh, to touch the fomite in order to spread it. It lives in the throats and the intestines of an infected person, and it enters through the mouth and spreads with contact uh, with the feces. So objects contaminated with feces, you're touching your hand to your mouth, drinking water, eating contaminated food, uh, this is especially an issue with younger children who don't practice uh, hygiene as well as adults might and they're always constantly putting things in their ha mouths or always touching things uh, which therefore contaminates many objects causing other children to be uh, exposed to this infection as well. So the infected person can spread it immediately before and about one to two weeks after their first symptoms appear. So it spreads quickly and as soon as you get it, you can spread it. And it can live in the fe infected feces for many weeks, so if you have infected poop and uh, right out there, you can easily uh, contract it. And asymptomatic people can still spread the infection. Uh, and right here is just a diagram showing that feces, or a person defecating with feces that is carrying the disease, and then they might not properly wash their hands, and so they touch food, water, or another object, and then it goes to a different person that might not have washed their hands as well, or they go and they eat something that the other person with contaminated hands have touched, and therefore now that they have the possibility of becoming infected. And here is just the life cycle of polio. So uh, it finds a victim and enters through the body with contaminated food, dirty fingers, or water. And it settles in and attaches to the receptors on the intestinal wall. And there it attacks, um, it either gives you mild flu-like symptoms or you have more detrimental, system, uh, detrimental symptoms where it's attacking your central nervous system and destroying cells in the spinal cord and it causes cell death and possibly muscle paralysis. And when it moves on, it moves on through the feces um, and the feces contaminate food and water. So the cycle continues. As for diagnosis, it's based on signs and symptoms, but given that some of the symptoms are flu-like, it might be difficult, so they now perform lab tests from throat swabs, feces, or cerebral, uh, cerebral spinal fluids. So the process of the infection, the incubation period is typically 7 to 14 days with a range of 3 to 35, and the infectious period, um, poliovirus stays in the throat about seven days and three to six weeks in the feces uh, and transmission is possible throughout all of that. As for the prevention, polio vaccines uh, are the, probably the best. Uh, many of us have gotten them when we were younger. Uh, there's IPV, which is the inactivated polio virus vaccine, and OPV, which is the oral polio virus vaccine. There's booster vaccines as well. Uh, another recommendation is excluding people with polio from public places. Uh, if your child has polio, keep them out of school, keep them away from the public playgrounds, pools, everything like that. And if you're an adult, stay home from work. And this is just uh, an advertisement during the polio epidemic, just telling uh, parents to keep your house clean, keep your children clean, and just having a cleaner house and cleaner children will prevent them or reduce the risk of contracting polio. So different treatments are physiotherapy, uh, just working your muscle groups in order to keep them strong. So you have medicines to reduce the muscle spasms and you get pain relievers. Uh, portable ventilators are also available so you don't have the iron lung anymore in order to help uh, the early stages of polio with the breathing. Uh, moderate exercise is recommended to prevent the deformity and loss of muscle function. As of 2015, there have been no reported cases of polio in the United States. Uh, there have been cases from like 1990 to 2015, but it's people from outside the United States bringing it in, but it's been confined and it didn't spread. And, think, and due to herd immunity and our vaccinations, 
uh, it didn't it wasn't a problem however there are countries without those vaccinations and without that the type of care that we have and uh so polio is still prevalent in many of the um third world third world countries and underdeveloped countries the more developed countries um especially in europe don't have this problem either but you see it a lot more in asia and africa